Bill's training camp, day five here at St. John Fisher College. Joe, I don't know about you, but I think the most interesting thing we learned today was Preston Brown keeps gummy bears in his hoodie under his pads when he practices. That is amazing. Snacks on snacks on snacks. <laughs> snacks on snacks on snacks. All right, so what about the real football stuff? What, it, what happened today? Well, I think the first thing that I, I really took away was that Tyrod Taylor had a much more positive day than he had had for the first really four days. I mean, albeit he had that one day where he was really in the zone during the red zone drill. Um, I think it was on day three, but yeah. altogether he had sort of a frustrating day. And even during the night practice, almost uncharacteristically was getting frustrated and showed a hint of frustration with himself for throwing it behind receivers, just throwing it off target. But today he was a lot more on point. He was putting it right on the hands of receivers. And to be quite frank, the receivers weren't doing him any favors because they dropped a few passes today. So I like Tyrod Taylor's today. I thought he was on point, and I think that's a it's a great way for him to kind of get back on track for what he was doing in minicamp and, and even in the OTAs as well. You mentioned wide receivers. Has anyone stepped up either today or through the first five days really think you really think at this point they might make the team? Maybe someone who was on the fringe there? Well, you know, I think there's a huge race and a huge glut of receivers right now to be that number three guy and the guy that stands out to me and I he's been kind of my favorite throughout this whole process is none other than Greg Salas the uh, the wide receiver uh, who came to the Bills late in the season last year I think they like him I think the coaching staff is comfortable with him he's shown an ability to make big plays he's somewhat of a taller player at six one six foot two I mean everything that's thrown his way he catches and to have that sort of dependability to go along with everything, I think he's the guy, to, in my opinion, that's the favorite to be that number three guy. However, you have some other guys that are making waves. For instance, Greg Little, who's a bigger physical guy that does have some raw talent. I think he's an interesting case to track. You have Des Lewis, you know, he's, he has the size, but he's kind of faded into the background once things get a little bit more physical. Then you have the younger guys like Marquise Goodwin, Walt Powell, I mean, and these other veterans like Jarrett Boykin and Leonard Hankerson trying to make a name for themselves. But right now, I think Salas, to me, is the guy who's standing out the most, not named Robert Wood and Sammy Watkins, that is. On defense, we've talked a lot about Stephon Gilmore standing mm -hmm. out. Anyone else really stepping up these first couple days? Well, you know, without Marcel Darius and Kyle Williams out there on the defensive line, it's giving them a lot of opportunities to some of these guys who are trying to solidify themselves on the active roster. And I think the, the two guys that have really shown the best in that capacity are Jarrell Worthy, who is trying to make the team after, you know, kind of bouncing around a few different places in the NFL, and also Leger Doosable, who has one of the coolest names on the team. Yeah, that's um, amazing. Those two guys have really lived in the backfield. Uh, I should say the offense's backfield because, you know, I've seen Jarrell Worthy get in for maybe four or five sacks for the first five days. Leger Doosable got in for a sack today, and he's also gotten in the backfield, really blown up some run plays. So those are two veterans who I think are trying to cement themselves on that active roster once the final cutdowns come. But those are two guys that have really stood out. And, of course, you know, Gilmore's really, really good, too. Day six tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It seems like every day we've talked about Tyrod because still so many yeah. people talking about Tyrod. Anything you're really looking for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow I think I would like to see. I, I, I think it might be one of those days where, you know, perhaps we get our first little live taste of live hitting. We haven't seen that just yet. The pads have been on for three days now. Perhaps they do like a goal line drill or something along those lines and just get themselves starting to hit a little bit more. And if they do, and that's where we start to see these linebackers and how they perform the running backs and them actually having to use their vision and you know lower the shoulder to get some more uh, yards through the contact so that's something that i'm looking forward to um, if it is the case that they get to that but if they don't then i just want to keep watching these wide receivers go because i think it's the most compelling part of training camp right now watching these receivers battle day in and day out to see who can kind of rise up and take that either number three job or even a spot on the roster. Awesome. Joe, as always, great stuff. Thank so day back. six of training camp tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. They practice again on Saturday. That's a night practice. You need a ticket if you're coming to that one. But for everything that's happened today, all of the days of training camp, hop on our WKBW app. Joe's got his observations. He's got photo galleries. We've got a new camera. We're really excited about it. Go check everything out right on WKBW.com. Everybody have a great night.